Welcome to the Module 5 screencast dealing with exponential growth and decay. Two major real-life applications that concern exponential growth and decay deal with either finding the time needed for an amount to double or half, or are concerned with finding a new amount after a period of time has elapsed and the population has been either increasing or decreasing growing or decaying. In the first problem that we're going to look at in this screencast, the initial population of a town is 3,500 and it grows with a doubling time of 10 years. That means that every 10 years the population will be twice what it was 10 years previous to that. We want to know what the population will be in 12 years and then in 24 years. To do that, we're going to use the formula that appears on your screen already. This will allow us to see what the amount is after both 12 years and 24 years. To figure out a new value of a population after a certain period of time has elapsed, we will need to take the initial population, or what is called in the formula the initial value, which is 3,500, multiply it by 2, which, which represents our doubling time, raised to small t divided by t double. In our particular problem, lowercase t is equal to the time that has elapsed and T subscript double is the amount of time that it takes the population to double. In our particular problem, the 12 years, the doubling time is 10 years, and as mentioned earlier, the initial value is 3,500. That's where our population was when we started keeping track of it. Now it's a matter of plugging the information that we are given into the formula to come up with the future value of this population. Initial value is 3,500 times 2 raised to the time elapsed, which is 12 years, divided by the time to double, which is 10 years. When you enter that into your calculator, you're going to be entering in the 3,500 times 2, followed by the caret key, which is found above the x squared key in the first column on your calculator, on the TI-30. That alerts the calculator to the fact that an exponent is following. Then we enter in the rest of our exponent, and we are good to go. Because we count our people in whole people, we're going to round to the nearest whole number, and that means that in 12 years the population will be 8,040 people. We have also been asked to find the population in 24 years. To do this, you have two options. You can either enter in the entire formula again, substituting this time 24 for 12, or if you have the Texas Instruments Scientific or Graphing Calculator, you can just use your up arrow key to get back into the formula that you used previously and then arrow back to change the 12 to a 24. Press enter and now you will find that your population has grown to 8,473 people after 24 years. To recap, First, make sure that you are using the correct formula for finding a new value and also identify the fact that the population is growing, not decaying, so you want the formula for double time. Then plug in the values, the initial value of 3,500 
times 2 raised to the time that will have elapsed divided by the time taken to double. Make sure that your answer makes sense. If a population is growing, you should have more people than you started with. Since 12 years is longer than the time it takes the population to double, you should have more than 7,000 people, which would be double 3,500. The second problem that we are going to work on in this screencast has to do with decay a situation where a population, in this case of trees, is not increasing exponentially but decreasing exponentially. Because of that, we are concerned with half-life rather than doubling time. We want to know how many years it is going to take for the forest to lose half of its area. Then after we find that, we're actually going to determine what fraction of the forest will remain after 30 years has gone by. Because the problem first asks for the half-life of the formula, we are going to use the rule of 70, which is a very simple, approximate way, not an exact way, but an approximate way to compute half-life as long as the percentage of growth or decay is not more than 15%. In this particular problem, the area of the forest is declining at a rate of 8% per year. So we can use this rather simple formula to come up with the amount of time it will take before the area is cut in half. To use this formula, we are going to take 70 and divide it by the percentage of decay. We get a half-life of 8.75 years. Now that we have this half-life, we can actually use it to figure out what fraction of the forest will remain in 30 years. And to do that, we're going to use our decay factor formula, where we take the initial value multiplied by 1 half raised to the t divided by t half power. If we are not given an initial value, we can still work this problem out. We are just going to consider that the forest started with 100% of its trees. So we are actually going to use an initial value of 1. We're going to be multiplying that 1 by 1 half raised to the lowercase t. You may remember from the previous example that lowercase t is the number of years that we are concerned with in this particular case. For us, that is 30 years divided by the half-life that we found in the previous step, which is 8 and 75 hundredths. When entering this into the calculator, remember anything times 1 is just the number itself. So for the purposes of this problem, I am going to enter opening my parentheses first, 1 half, closing my parentheses. This is a very important step. You don't just want to raise 2 to the power of 30 divided by 8 and 75 hundredths. You want to raise 1 half to that power. That's why we need to enclose it in parentheses. Followed by the caret key, open parentheses again because there is more than one operation going on inside the parentheses. Close the parenthesis after you've entered your value. Go ahead and key it into your calculator. Remembering, again, to check your answer to make sure that it makes sense. We are talking about an area that is declining. We are going to get a value of less than 100% or less than 1. When we work this out, we get a decimal answer rounded to the nearest thousandth of 93 thousandths. We are going to change this to a percent by multiplying by 100, moving the decimal point over two places, which means that after 30 years, only 9.3% of the area of the forest will remain. Thank you for viewing the screencast.